Hey guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, with a look at the Samsung Galaxy S4 Mini. So this is sort of a miniaturized version of the very popular Galaxy S4. So the Galaxy S4 is a 5-inch phone. This is a 4.3-inch phone, so it's kind of iPhone 5 in size and form factor. Now, this isn't exactly like the S4. It doesn't have the specs of the S4, but it has similar design and features. So we're going to take a look at the differences. Now, in terms of specs, we have a 1.7 gigahertz dual-core processor, so that's in contrast to the 1.9 quad-core or the uh, octa-core you get uh, with the Galaxy S4. Uh, we also have 8 megapixel autofocusing camera which is capable of recording video at 1080p at 30 frames per second so it's kind of like GS3 territory there. We get 1.5 gigs of RAM versus the 2 gigs in the Galaxy S4. Uh, we also get our 4.3 inch Super AMOLED screen. We'll talk about resolution when we unbox it. We have NFC. We also have a built-in FM radio. We have a 1900 milliamp hour battery. Uh, we also have LTE capable. Uh, this is supported in international markets with LTE. This will work in the U.S. on GSM carriers like AT&T and T-Mobile. I don't expect this to be sold on any of those carriers. So this is probably not coming to the U.S., but you never know. So this, again, is sold internationally about $100 cheaper. So you can pick this up about $500. So that's kind of a mid-range phone. It's actually similar in price to the Galaxy Mega, which I also reviewed previously. Uh, it's also similar in spec to the Galaxy Mega, but you get a smaller form factor. All right, so let's just cut our seal, and as you can see here, we have the GTI 9195. So that is the model number we're looking at here. Lift the lid, and there it is. Now, as you can see, I have the white version. This is also available in black, so you can pick up any color you choose, just like the GS4. A little tab here to lift up. There is our little, little Galaxy S4 Mini, definitely much smaller than any Samsung phone I've used recently. Let's go ahead and take a look at what's inside this box. We have a quick start guide. So this is the US, or not US, this is the UK version, so it's in English this time. Warranty card. We also get some of our accessories. I can see that huge UK wall adapter here. So you can see it's folding, so that's kind of nice if you fold these out. And I think I'm missing something here. There we go. So you got the other part here, slides in. There you go. We also have our headphones. So these are the standard Samsung headphones with inline mic and remote control. You have the uh, in-ear earpieces, and they do give you more gels to fit your ear. We have our 1900 milliamp hour battery, it's kind of small battery, and we have our matching USB cable. So let's go ahead and take a look at that little phone. So we got lots of plastic covering it. Looks very similar to the Galaxy S4. So let's just lift this up here. There you go. Very shiny white plastic. Uh, it's got that same texture of the Galaxy S4. You can kind of see that weave or uh, grid texture on the front same story here so let's lift up the protector Galaxy S4 Super AMOLED Android Bluetooth NFC technology and there you go so you get that white bezel Samsung branding 1.9 megapixel front-facing camera capable of recording video at 720p we also get our sensors uh, so we have an ambient light sensor as well as a proximity sensor our earpiece we have our home button as well as our backlit Android controls, which are invisible until lit. So let's see if we look along the side. We have lots of pieces of plastic surrounding the bezel, so let's go ahead and peel those off as well. All right, so there we go. We got the last piece of plastic. Now around the camera, we don't see a piece of plastic like you got with the Galaxy S4, so nothing to peel off there. So let's just take a quick look around here so you can see our power button in the traditional Samsung position. Uh, we have our thumb port for popping off the back panel. We have a headphone, or actually that's our IR blaster. That's the headphone jack. That is the microphone. So this does have the IR blaster we're familiar with now with the Galaxy S4 and every other Samsung device. We have our volume rocker up and down. Uh, we have our micro USB port, another microphone down here. And we have our speaker grill down here. So it's exactly like a miniaturized version of the Galaxy S4 full size. So same story here, LED flash in the same position, uh, speaker in the same position, all the ports in the same position, same design with that metal bezel, or plastic simulated metal bezel, same ports on the top, IR blaster, microphone, headphone jack, uh, same volume rocker, just shrunken down a bit, and same with the uh, sleep-wake button on the side. All right, so let's crack open this phone. So we're going to peel off this back cover, pops right off. So there you go, it's pretty much all battery in this case. The phone is so tiny, and you can also see that the 
micro SD card slot, so this is capable of uh, holding up to 64 gig micro SD cards, as well as our SIM slot right here, so it's underneath the battery. Uh, you can see our battery contact points up here. So let's go ahead and install our battery. Just gonna drop it in, pop it into place. Now another thing you're missing here is a LED notification light, so that's usually positioned over here. You'll find that on the GS4 5 inch, as well as phones like the Galaxy Mega. All right, so let's just go ahead and boot this up for the first time. A little vibration. Galaxy S4 Mini GTI 9195. So during the setup process, Samsung will kind of coach you on some of the available features of the Galaxy S4 Mini. That includes things like S-Beam, which we're familiar with. Uh, that allows you to transfer files between phones by touching the back of the phone. If you tap on any one of these features, it will explain exactly what it is and it will illustrate it for you as well. You have voice control, uh, which you can toggle on and off. It's off by default. Uh, so for example, uh, you can stop or snooze an alarm with voice commands such as stop or snooze. Same with capture, you can say cheese, smile, or shoot. Same with music controls, that sort of thing. You have to be about 20 to 30 centimeters away uh, for that to work. We also have easy mode, which kind of turns the phone into kind of a simpler user interface. It places all the major apps on the home screen, so you have quick access to everything you need without setting up the device uh, personally. Uh, you also have adapt display, which will adapt the display uh, to the ambient conditions. So let's go to next. And we can name our phone as well, so let me go ahead and name it to our Galaxy S4 Mini. Alright, so let's go ahead and take a look at this 4.3 inch display, resolution of 540 by 960, good for a pixel density of 256 ppi. Certainly not in the 1080p range of the Galaxy S4 5 inch phone. If you look at them side by side here, you can see uh, there's a big difference in size, obviously. Uh, but I actually find this display to be brighter. So again, both are AMOLED displays. Both are very nice displays, but this seems to be brighter than the 5-inch uh, display. But certainly not the pixel density of the 5-inch display. This is a very, very nice display. Uh, but if we look at the iPhone 5 here, again, very similar in size and form factor to the GS4 Mini. You can see that the GS4 Mini is still a bit larger. They've filled the same footprint with a larger display than the iPhone 5. Now, the iPhone 5 is narrower. Uh, it's also a little taller than the GS4 Mini. It's kind of minor difference here. It's also a little thicker. The GS4 Mini is quite a bit thicker than the iPhone 5. Uh, but overall, the same footprint, the same size and form factor. I definitely like this size. It's very comfortable to use. You can see you can reach the entire screen with your thumb in one hand, so you don't have to do any sort of hand gymnastics to uh, operate the phone. I really like that uh, sort of size and form factor, so it's kind of nice to see uh, we're getting this from Samsung instead of focusing entirely on large phones. Now, like the full-size GS4, this is running the latest version of Android, Android 4.2.2. It's also running the latest version of TouchWiz, so you get very similar overall user experience, including that starburst effect to unlock the screen. Uh, if we look at our home screens again, very similar territory here. This is the default configuration, so you have lots of samsung oriented uh, widgets. So you got Samsung Hub, you got the Story Album app, you got your weather and clock widget, a lot of the uh, pre-installed apps, your camera widgets, or your camera app, there you go. So you got lots and lots of them. You can use that little scroller here. You can edit them just by pinching out. You can change which one is the home screen. You can delete them. That sort of thing. So it's all pretty familiar territory here. If we go to your apps here, you can see the apps that Samsung has included. That includes S Planner, of course, Chat On, Samsung Apps, and Samsung Hub. You also have Watch On. Now, Watch On is the app that allows you to use the IR Blaster to control your TV. I've demonstrated that before. It's kind of a nice app. Basically, it allows you to uh, connect to your TV so you can program your devices into the Watch On app and control it uh, using your phone. You also have Group Play, which allows you to connect other Samsung devices so you can share music, files, or games. It's kind of a neat app as well. Uh, we have S Translator, which translates text in real time. Works pretty well, so you can both speak it and write text, and it'll translate for you. Uh, it's kind of nice if you're traveling. You have an FM radio here, which is kind of different. Uh, we don't have that on the full-size GS4, and you have also lots of other Google apps, such as YouTube, Play Music, Maps, and Google Chrome, of course. We also have Dropbox, Flipboard, TripAdvisor, Voice Search, which is Google's Voice Search, Samsung Link, and the Story Album app. Now, what you don't have here that you get with the GS4 is S-Health, so that's missing here as well.
Now in terms of feature set, this is pretty familiar territory here. We do have lock screen widgets which are turned off by default and I'll show you how to enable those under settings. Uh, again, this is Android 4.2. Uh, so we have our drop down menu here with our expandable notifications. We have our widgets up here which is a very touch with sort of thing to do. We can also use that two finger gesture to bring down our quick settings. Uh, so you can see the quick settings actually reveal some of the differences between the uh, 5 inch model and the mini. So let's go to our quick settings here and you can see some of the things that are missing here. Uh, so for example, air view and air gesturing not available on the S4 mini. We also don't have smart pause or smart scroll on the S4 mini. We do have smart stay, so smart stay technology uses the camera here to monitor your eyes. So it knows whether you're looking at your phone or not and will either prevent the phone from going to sleep or allow it to go to sleep. So that's a feature we're pretty familiar with uh, now that it actually debuted with the GS3 a while ago. So unfortunately, even though it has the GS4 name, it doesn't have some of the hallmark GS4 features uh, that I think we've come to expect with the GS4. So that's kind of unfortunate here. So that's something to keep in mind. Now as always we have our Android controls down here so we have our menu button which again is contextual we have our back button and we have our home button some of these have dual functions so for example if we tap and hold the menu button it gets us to Google now what's the weather like tomorrow in Detroit tomorrow's forecast for Detroit is 79 degrees and partly cloudy all right now the home button also has a few functions here so if we tap and hold that it gets us to our app launcher here. So these are all of our recent apps and we can quickly jump to any one of them just by tapping on them or swipe them out of the way. We can also clear all of them just by hitting that. Get us back there. We can go to Google now as well. Brings us to Google search. Uh, and if we go back here to our system manager here so you can see our active apps. We can end individual apps. We can go to downloads, RAMs. You can see how much RAM we have left running and we can see our storage capacity. Now you can also double tap the home button to get to S Voice. What's the weather like tomorrow in Detroit? It'll be a high of 79 degrees and partly sunny on Thursday. Now you do not have multi-windowing mode here as well. That's something you'll find on the GS4, which you can activate by tapping and holding the back button. So that feature is not present with the Mini. Now we do have our lock screen widgets, which again are off by default, but if we go to our settings, we can quickly activate that. Uh, so we want to go to my device, go to home screen mode. Uh, actually, let's not do that. We want to go to lock screen. And lock screen, we can enable multiple widgets, which was off. I just turned it on earlier. Uh, so now we can take a look at that. We also have lots of other settings here, such as the unlock effect. We can enable shortcuts so we can have apps on the screen. You can also modify what appears on the screen. So for example, I do not want the standard Android app. I want to delete that and I want to add Chrome. So let's do that right here. There we go. And we're all set. So let's go ahead and take a look at our lock screen. So if we go to our lock screen. We can now see we have our apps here, which we can launch quickly, just like that. Let's go back to our lock screen and if we go to our whoops, we go to our clock icon, if we swipe over that, you can now see I have access to my widgets. So you can see these are just some of my uh, this is actually the Google Now widget which I installed earlier. So let's swipe here so you can see Google Now. We can also add more just by swiping to the right and we get another uh, option here. So we hit plus, we can add a number of predefined widgets such as email widgets, Gmail. Google Plus, Messaging, Music, S Planner, Watch On, which is kind of nice to quickly have access to from your lock screen when you want to quickly control your television. Uh, so let's see if we can add our email widget here. So there you go, that is our email widget. Uh, so let's go to the lock screen, swipe again, there is Google Now, and there is our email. We can quickly look at that and we can click on any one of these. This is all junk mail, so hopefully nothing too offensive. But there you go, works pretty well. Now you can also quickly access your apps from the lock screen just by swiping left. So you have these predefined apps uh, which you can modify as well. So you can add apps or remove apps or you can change this to the camera. So if you rather just activate the camera by swiping to the left, you can do that under settings. So let me go ahead and fix this and go to settings, go to my lock screen, go to my lock screen widgets, go to clock or personal, actually no, favorite apps or camera. And we're going to select camera instead of favorite apps, click save. Now if we go to our lock screen, swipe, there we go, quickly access our camera. Now speaking of the camera, again this is actually very familiar. We have our modes here, so we have sports, 
Night Auto, Beauty Face, Best Photo, Continuous Shot, Best Face, Sound and Shot, Rich Tone HDR, Panorama, Sports, etc, etc, etc. So we have lots of modes here. What you won't find is that Dual Shot mode, which records both the uh, front-facing and rear-facing camera at the same time. That's something the GS4 does. Now the controls are pretty familiar here. So we have our camera shutter. Uh, we have our video. So we can record video. And we can pause it and resume it. We can also shoot photos while we're recording video. So as you can see, it mutes the shutter sound effect so it doesn't interrupt your video recording. Now in terms of the sharpness of the display, I'm actually pretty impressed here. So if we look at the really small text on the Full The Verge website, you can see it's pretty readable. It is a little crunchy looking, but it's not too bad. So I'm pretty impressed. And of course, you can pinch in and out to zoom on that text to make it more readable. Now I find the biggest challenge here with this smaller display and the smaller text is just the brightness of the display. So OLED technology, even at full brightness, really isn't terribly bright. Uh, so for example, if you look at the iPhone here, you can see it's quite a bit brighter. Uh, so the background is much wider which makes the text uh, really pop out here so you can see that the black text is much sharper. So that's something to keep in mind here. Uh, it's still a great display. I have really no complaints here. OLED technology has its benefits uh, and I think it's actually pretty sharp even though it's not over 300 over 400 ppi. I actually have no complaints here in terms of that uh, lower quality display. Now the keyboard is pretty familiar if you're used to an iPhone so it is a little tight here but it feels pretty comfortable to type on. If you go to settings you have other controls here. Uh, so you have continuous input so you can enable that. Uh, so if we have continuous input enabled. We go back to our keyboard and get to, here we go, we can start to, basically it's a swipe light control. Hello, well, this is a test so it works pretty well and of course you have your voice keyboard as well. Actually if we tap and hold the control down here we get to our voice. Hello, this is Michael from Rochester Hills, Michigan, period. And that works extremely well. Now in terms of benchmark scores using Antutu, you can see that the GS4 5 is definitely best the uh, mini by quite a substantial margin here, so 25,000 versus 14,000. Actually, this is very similar to the Mega. So the Mega score is about 13,285. Uh, so a little better performer. The Mini is a little slightly better performer, probably because there are less pixels here to push than the Mega. The Mega is slightly more pixely than the uh, S4 Mini. So overall, because they have similar specs, it makes sense that they also have similar benchmark results. So in conclusion, the S4 Mini is kind of an interesting product. It's for people who kind of want a smaller phone, who don't want those oversized large phones with a big screen. Uh, it's particularly good if you want to use this phone quickly with one hand and don't really value the large screen. Uh, the display is pretty nice. It's not as sharp as you get with a lot of high-end smartphones these days. And as a mid-range phone, it's got mid-range specs, including a mid-range camera, mid-range CPU. Uh, it doesn't have all the features of the full-size GS4, which kind of confuses things here because this is labeled a GS4, but it doesn't really resemble a GS4. Maybe it resembles it in design, and maybe the user experience is similar, but the feature set is quite different, and certainly the specs are completely different. So it's called a GS4 Mini, but really it's its own product. Uh, it's still a mid-range phone. It would be nice if we had a, a phone this size with full high-end specs. So it would be nice if the GS4 Mini actually resembled the GS4 in specs but had the smaller form factor. Not everybody likes a large screen. So that's a consideration here. That's why the iPhone 5 is still only 4 inches. It's why a lot of people still prefer that size instead of going to the 5 inch phones we're getting nowadays. So definitely I like this phone. Uh, I wish the specs were a little bit better. I wish the camera was a little bit better. I wish the screen was a little sharper resolution. But I'm pretty impressed overall for the price. Uh, and I definitely think this fits a niche for a lot of people who want a smaller phone and don't care about all the features the GS4 offers. You still get all the benefits of TouchWiz, still works pretty smoothly. And with that lower resolution screen, less pixels to push, I have no complaints here in terms of overall performance. So there you go. That is the GS4 Mini. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you again in the next one.